Well, uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us here on uh, online today. A little coffee chat around the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society of Canada, the Visionary of the Year campaign. Uh, as you've probably seen on my Facebook, my uh, my social feeds, actually every one of them has been uh, inundated with posts around the Visionary of the Year campaign over the last five weeks. And today we kick off the final five weeks of this campaign uh, here in Newfoundland and Labrador. Of course, just the one that team that I'm happy to lead, NL Strong. And a couple of those members of my team are going to join me for this coffee chat today because not only are they members of my team, but now they've become friends through this campaign because uh, this campaign has brought us together uh, through their journey through leukemia and lymphoma, blood cancer. Uh, here, of course, uh, the highlight of our conversation to kind of bring you up to speed on on uh, their stories and, of course, what the society can do for for you, your family, your friends who may be going through a similar journey. Uh, and, of course, the funds you raise will help not only help those supports, but also aid in research. So joining us today on our coffee chat, and I'll just introduce everybody uh, rather quickly. I do have Michelle Lambert on the, the team chat here today. She is with the society itself here on the ground in the Newfoundland and Labrador. Uh, i got Pam Stone joining us as well, who just rang the bell. Uh, we are very happy to say back in the fall of 2022. And then we have Veronica as well. And Veronica is the mother of, of a child who uh, went through their own battle. So we're going to share the stories today just to bring you up to speed. And they wanted to share their stories to bring you up to speed on, on what you are doing to support Leukemia and Lymphoma Society of Canada. So Michelle, I guess I'll bring you on first because we are talking about the society today uh, in general aspects and encouraging folks to donate. So I guess maybe do a little introduction on yourself and then a bit about the society and what it's all about. Sure. Um, thanks for inviting me to this coffee chat today. It's always a wonderful opportunity to talk about the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society and our local community here in Newfoundland, Labrador. So my name is Michelle Lambert. I'm the community development lead. Uh, I work here in St. John's, Newfoundland, and I work with our blood cancer community uh, here in the province. And I also uh, lead one of our uh, major fundraising campaigns called Like the Night, which is different from uh, Visionaries, which is what Greg's involved in. Um, but the Leukemia Lymphoma Society is a national charity, so we provide services to uh, people affected by blood cancer and their families from, from coast to coast. Um, and we, we, our, our mission is to improve the quality of lives, life for those affected by blood cancer. And we do that primarily in two ways. One is an investment in research. Um, and since uh, the 1950s, we've invested millions and millions of dollars uh, into research, which has really gone a long way in improving the quality of life. Uh, it's improved treatments um, for people, um, and so that health outcomes are, are much improved. Um, one in particular that I think is the is the most astounding is the advancements in pediatric uh, cancer care. Um, you know, a child who was diagnosed with leukemia uh, in the 50s had a very uh, small chance of survival, sadly, five to ten percent, and today. Uh, that's over 90 percent. And that's thanks to investment. And we're very proud as an organization to say that we funded uh, some of the research that's led to those advances. Um, the second arm of our mission is patient support as services. So we provide a great deal of information and education and resources to people who are diagnosed with a blood cancer through every stage of the experience from the time they're diagnosed through their treatments um and then through survivorship but also there are families and caregivers as well uh so we have online virtual support groups we have a first connection program where people can be connected with someone to talk to um a situation similar to them about their experiences and get that uh, level of peer support um we have a tremendous amount of information specific to different types of blood cancers. There are 137 different types. A lot of people are really surprised to, to know that there are that many types of blood cancers. Um, uh, and also we do like podcasts and webcasts. Sorry, I got distracted there for a second because I was thinking about the podcast that I did with Veronica back in, in 2020. Um, so we include people from Newfoundland and Labrador in the development of these resources. And a great example of that was a podcast we did on uh, uh, being a caregiver to a child diagnosed with a with a blood cancer and uh, Veronica did an amazing job with that. So all of those um, resources and more that I spoke about um, are on our website, bloodcancers.ca. Um, and if, if there's anything in particular you wanted to chat about, um, Greg, in terms of those resources, I'm happy to elaborate. But that's just a real quick snapshot of, of, uh, of what we do. 
Yeah, for sure. And we can circle back to some of those things and and talk about that as the conversation unfolds here this morning. Uh, Veronica, I guess uh, Michelle kind of got a perfect segue here to you now. She brought your name up already. So uh, let's talk a bit about the story uh, of your daughter, of course, and and uh, maybe your connection to the society. And obviously, not only just the journey you went through, but how you become such a big advocate now for the society and the work that you do. Well, um our journey, I guess, started back in July of 2018. We were camping at Terra Nova like we always do. And uh, being a stay-at-home mom, I thought it was really weird that my daughter was limping. And uh, over the course of the weekend, I noticed she was limping more and more. Uh, by the time we got back in town, I made an appointment right away to see the doctor. By this point, she had a slight fever, nothing that would panic you. It just, it came and went, 99 degrees. And she had a prickly rash in her legs. At this point, we were going to see the doctor the next day. So I just noted it and didn't think much else of it. And then when we were literally in the doctor's office, she started to ooze blood from her gums. So the doctor, upon hearing all that, sent us right away to emerge. And that's when I learned that all the signs were pointing to blood cancer. And sure enough, they confirmed that the next day. So Amelia at the time was only two and a half years old. Um, It was uh, an other world experience to go through with with your daughter. Cancer always is. And um, to face that, you know, not just like to face that for her um, and to to realize that the only way that we could get her through it was to go through it with her and, you know, to guide her through it. And, uh, and that, you know, given her age, she was going to be that much more scared if we weren't able to, you know, stay calm and upbeat. So um, that was my, that's our blood cancer uh, story, I guess. Um, Our introduction to the Leukemia Society was kind of when I came out of that, oh my God, what is happening phase. (laughs) And I actually wanted to learn more about what she had and what I could do to help her and, you know, that kind of thing. I wanted to go to a reliable source. I didn't want to just Google it willy nilly on the internet. Mm -hmm. So that was my introduction to the LLSC. And um, a lot of the stuff that Michelle mentioned there, the, um, the webcasts, and the pamphlets. And back in the day, they had a diagnosis kit. I don't know if they still do, but it was it was fabulous. And it just, you know, it enabled me to come to grips with the fact that she she had this disease, um, helped me to understand the different uh, reports that we were (laughs) reading and the different decisions we were having to make. And um, in addition to that, it also uh, put us in contact with a lot of other blood cancer survivors. So we found it really, I found as a mom, it helped me, you know, get grounded and helped me towards being able to put on that, that brave face for her and, Mm -hmm. uh, and that kind of thing. And it gave me a level of comfort too. Like there were times when her treatment was going to change. She was on treatment for 803 days. And of course Mm -hmm. the level of medication she's getting ebbs and flows over that time the amount of reports you're getting ebbs and flows. When you're used to getting a report on her blood every seven to 10 days, and all of a sudden it's once a month, there's a bit of panic. But being able to talk to other blood cancer survivors or their parents and know like that they went through it too and that they had those feelings that, Mm -hmm. yes, this is really good, she's moving along, but it's also like scary in a way. Um, Those were the kind of connections that we needed as a family and that we were able to access through the Leukemia Society. So since then, we've just, um, you know, if you're in a situation like that, you remember the people and the organizations that helped you through it, like the people that helped get you through. And we were blessed with a great network of friends and family. And in terms of organizations, LLSC was way up there. So I can never, I've said this to Michelle a million times, I can never do enough for the LLSC because of the impact that they had on her journey. And um, that's why whenever she calls me, I do my best to help her out. (laughs) 
Well, I know you are uh, heavily involved in, in being an advocate for, for the LLSC, and I know I reached out to you there a few weeks ago, and I knew you were sharing some of the posts of this day, and I said, I don't want to put more burden on her, but I'm going to ask her because I know how big of an advocate you have been over the years, but uh, I do appreciate you jumping on my team and helping support this as well, because it's another way uh, for this campaign coming to the province for the first time to branch people into, the, into this province and bring up the awareness, you know? I'm so happy to help you out and so happy that you asked me to be involved. It's a uh, it's a great competition and I I can't wait to show Canada and you know the national LLSC just how much Newfoundlanders stand behind their their people and how we're all going to fight blood cancer. For sure. Uh before I move over to Pam, I got to ask you how's Amelia doing today? Is she doing good? She's fabulous. She's uh 7 years old. She's in grade 2. She loves cheer. She loves swimming. She's constantly on the go. She is so brave and so determined. I'm so proud of her. She's doing awesome. I love her. Uh, Pam, I know uh, we'll bring you into the conversation now. You have your own story to this. And I mentioned this, actually. I did an interview with a friend of mine there a few weeks ago. And I mentioned, you know, there's no uh, no real age uh, that kind of falls into the realm of when you can get these. It goes from young children, like we see with Amelia, to very old seniors. And you're right in the middle of that there, Pam. Uh, you just rang the bell, though, thankfully, in November uh, after a battle with lymphoma. And, and so proud to, to be able to see that. And you reached out to me just a few weeks ago and said, listen, I just went through my battle. I want to do what I can to help support as well. So, uh, Pam, uh, thanks for, for joining us this morning, joining the team as well, and becoming a part of the initial. But just walk us through your journey and why you want to help. Yeah, um, again, thanks for having me today. And uh, and I can echo the the voice of Michelle and Veronica here. And, and it, things that they both said I can reflect on um, very closely, near and dear to my heart. So my cancer journey, I guess, started a year ago, um, last winter actually i noticed a rash so back to veronica's point um there was a rash on my legs and my arms and i thought okay it's winter it must just be a detergent or something um you know very trivial very healthy i was at 41 at the time very active um exercising every day i was the hockey mom i have a so i have an eight-year-old son uh, and i was the beaver leader for his beaver group um worked full time and uh, all of a sudden had this rash, but again, didn't think much of it. Um, then I developed a cough that got like continuously worse throughout last winter. I'm sure you can all remember last winter, everyone around you had COVID. So every time I went somewhere, I was coughing or trying to mask a cough. And people were like, oh, you must have COVID. No, nope, did not COVID, done a test. I just got this cough that won't go away, won't go away. And then the end of March, um, I woke up. Uh, to get ready to go to work actually i was getting ready to go to a spin class and i looked in the mirror and i could even feel it but my whole face and neck was just swollen like my eyes were practically swollen shut and i thought okay this is something more serious i really need to uh, see a doctor and thankfully i know um we talk about healthcare and all these issues that that we've all faced but um thankfully i had really good health care and my family doctor lucky that I had one at the time as well, um, got me in right away and she couldn't explain um, the various symptoms that I had. So she sent me for a chest x-ray the very next day, got up early and had blood work done and had a chest x-ray. And then by late that afternoon, I would say my world kind of collapsed and uh, my doctor phoned and told me she suspected I had lymphoma. And I don't know, I, I'm very much note oriented. And I, I took the pen and I was writing the word lymphoma on the page. And uh, when I looked at the word, I thought to myself, this can't be like, you know, but sure enough. And uh, so the next day I went for a CT scan um, and by lunchtime the next day it was confirmed that I had lymphoma. So I had a mass that had grown on my chest um, that was blocking my airways and all my veins. Um, and uh, so they're very quick to react. And within a, a week or so, I had every kind of scan you can imagine and uh, was admitted to the hospital for Easter last year and started chemotherapy. I did six rounds of chemo. Um, and then in September, I was, I guess, put in remission and I rang the bell and, and celebrated. So um, once the dust settled from all that, I reflected and realized that I probably could use some help. Um, and I reached out to um, some, well, my nurse friend at the, the chemo unit there in health science, and she suggested I get in touch with the Lymphoma Society, or Le Leukemia Lymphoma Society of Canada. Um, and then I, I met Michelle and whatnot. But as I reflected back, um, upon my diagnosis, a good friend of mine um, wrote me a message and she said, you know, heard the news and couldn't believe this was happening, but she said, 
so you don't get on the Google and do all these types of things. She said, I think a really good reference is this website. And it was actually the LLSC website. And I remember, and I'm sure Veronica can attest to this, had some sleepless nights um, at first at the beginning and uh, read a lot on, on the website there. So then I realized, oh, I had a connection with the LLSC from the beginning of my journey. I think I went into fight mode. Um, and then once the dust settled, I reached out and realized I needed some further help. And that's when um, I was connected with this peer program, this uh, this connection program. And I did two sessions with a lady out in Western Canada who went through a very similar um, cancer journey to myself. And uh, also have been going in some of these virtual um, workshops uh, that Michelle mentioned. So then I thought just if I could help give back to the society that's helping me even today, like there's a there's a, a virtual um, call um, the Thursday evening. So I'll join that one. So um, if I could give back to this society a little bit, I really wanted to help. So so here I am. And I, I saw uh, I think Michelle put me on the Greg's team and uh, I said, oh, I'd like to join that team and see if I can help in any way I can. So, yeah, so and we appreciate that. And as I said off the top, it was uh, something for me to be able to have a connection with you both. Uh, I, I knew of Amelia's story before this campaign started. I've been involved with the society, I guess, in the volunteer capacity since uh, my friend uh, Chuck Lewis, unfortunately, lost his battle back in 2019. Uh, and I've been connected to to many of the different events over the years and have seen the stories that had been shared. So to have uh, an opportunity to be able to bring awareness to the society and to get you guys to join me here today to highlight the the the, the awareness that it brought to you and then the comfort that it brought to you it is something that I'm very happy to have you all join me here on today. Uh, Michelle, maybe we'll circle back here to you just as someone on the ground here in, in Newfoundland and Labrador when it comes to the society, uh, just being able to have these personal connections with folks and, and to be able to see them uh, not only uh, thrive and get better and, and get through their journeys and then to come back to support what you guys are trying to do i mean that's what it's all about for you at the end of the day isn't it i mean it must make you feel pretty special i i'm full of so much gratitude on a day-to-day -day basis um through my work with llsc and getting to know just such amazing people like pam and veronica here in newfoundland and labrador the stories just warm my heart so much bravery and courage and strength from from them and their families and the healthcare uh, professionals that support them it's i have to say it's an extremely rewarding i say job but it feels like more than a job to me it really is uh my passion um so super grateful to uh, to meet folks like uh, like these ladies um and also really grateful i i would be remiss if i didn't thank our donors greg you're going through a, mm -hmm. a fundraising campaign here now we are unable to to do what we do and support the blood cancer community without the generosity of of individuals and businesses and foundation um llc mission is completely supported um through donations we don't receive government funding so it's it's incredible the way um people step up for the blood cancer community across canada it really and truly here in Newfoundland, Labrador, it's it's incredible. So thanks for uh, thanks for giving yeah. me a chance to talk about it. No, I thank you for joining us. Michelle was my first ever connection to the society, and then when uh, this campaign came up and she she called me, I think we were maybe sixty seconds into it. And I said I wanted to do it myself, but I had of course run it up the chain to a few few people who were over me. But really appreciate the opportunity to be able to help highlight this in Newfoundland and Labrador. Uh, I won't make this go on too much longer because I know we're all busy and just getting started here today. But uh, Veronica, I'll go back to you first. Any final thoughts and maybe any final messages for anyone tuned in today? on why they should click, which I will say uh, the link in the description here to donate to the team uh, for Visionary of the Year. Well, first of all, I just want to say we are like really lucky as a society and as a group of people too, to have uh, folks like Michelle. Um, she's amazing. And uh, we, you know, we're eternally grateful for all the donors who, who support the LLSC and contribute to you know, really the health and well-being of um, of our children and ourselves. Um, we did get to benefit during Amelia's treatment from um, results of blood cancer research. When her uh, treatment, which should have been um, once every 28 days, it uh, one of her medications was reduced from every 28 days to every 84 days. So, I mean, that made a really big difference to the quality of life that we were experiencing at the time, but also 
to, you know, it reduced her late effects, it reduced the side effects that she would have. So, you know, for LLSC to be supporting research as well as patients and to offer programs, um, it goes a long way. And they're really on the ball when um, during COVID, like within a couple of months of the pandemic being declared, I was sitting on a webcast about COVID and blood cancer. So, you know, those those webcasts, podcasts, everything is really, really well done and very much appreciated. And your dollars do go directly to patient support and research. And that's what we need. And cancer affects everybody. You know, we're all at some point, unfortunately, going to hear that diagnosis for ourselves or for someone we love. And uh, we can never, <laughs> we can never say enough good things. We can never give back enough to those organizations. So thanks, Michelle. And thank you, Greg, for everything that you do. Well, I appreciate you joining me uh, here this morning, Veronica. Uh, Pam, I'll come over to you now for any final thoughts as well, uh, as we encourage folks to to get online and make a few donations here today in our final stretch. Yeah, um, again, just to echo Veronica, um, I think some of my, I can um, attribute some of my success with, with chemotherapy with one of the drugs um, in particular. Um, I think that came out of the research from the LLSC work. So I have to say a big thank you to LLSC because it got me back on my feet. And as you can see, I'm kind of back to my my normal, although new normal for sure. But um, I'm here and I'm doing all the things I love with my family and friends. So um, thanks to the LLSC. Thanks, Greg, for doing this. Thanks, Michelle, for being a big cheerleader for all of us. So, um, yeah, just a big thanks to everybody for this. For sure. I appreciate uh, you guys again joining me this morning. Uh, Pam Stone, Veronica Varney, and Michelle Lambert. So I'm Greg Smith. Uh, I am the uh, one and only candidate of Newfoundland Lambert Order, first ever for a visionary of the year with the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. Uh, into the final stretch of our 10 week campaign five weeks ago. So if you do have uh, it in you today, uh, any dollar amount will count. Uh, shares on this video will count as well as awareness and support as we move forward in the final stretch. Keep an eye on social media as well. We'll all be sharing a whole bunch of events over the course of uh, the next few weeks. we got a lot of fun things planned to give back as well through community initiatives. So thanks for joining us on this Coffee Chat today uh, and in support of the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society of Canada.